Hello there people of the internet. So this is not a rifle that I bring out here very often for exactly this reason. This right here is a Carcano, Carcano, however you want to pronounce it. This is the Troop Special model. This right here is what they gave to all of their uh, truck drivers, artillery guys, people that didn't necessarily need a full length rifle but still needed some sort of way to defend themselves. Uh, the Carcano, specifically the 1891s, which is what these right here originally were, they used a gain twist barrel, so you circumcise the barrel a little bit. That was an interesting euphemism I just used. <laughs> you snip the tip off the barrel and uh, you lose that gain twist rifling, so the bullet doesn't quite stabilize all that well, so these are notorious for tumbling out around 300 yards or so but that is way farther than what I would normally shoot at. Uh, most distance I'd fire at is probably about 100. Uh, that's my max, especially with my eyesight. But I'd like to take one of these out shooting. Specifically, I have a sporterized 1891. Uh, the barrel on that one has also been cut down, so we're gonna have the same issue, but again, I'm not going to shoot out past you know, 300 yards, so that's not really gonna be a problem for me. The main problem I have with these Carcano Carcano rifles is that the sights are more unusual than what we are used to and as a result these are notorious for shooting extremely high. Since I'm going to be hunting in dense woods like what we have over there because that's just what Florida is unless you go to very specific parts of Florida then it's basically that except underwater. <laughs> But I'm going to be shooting at about 50 yards or so, which is approximately what we are here, maybe around 40 yard uh, mark, but this is about the range that I'll be shooting at. I've been doing some research on these rifles, trying to figure out just where to hold the sights at. And it turns out that the battle sight, meaning not the uh, elevation sight, but the actual uh, non-adjustable, non-elevation, non-windage adjustable uh, fixed, battle sight on your Carcano rifle, apparently that has two different points of aim on it. First point of aim is to line your side up with your rear uh, wings like you would for pretty much any other conventional rifle, uh, at least that we are used to here in the United States. I'll even put up a little diagram somewhere to show, you know, how you're supposed to line up the top of that sight to those wings there, and apparently that gives you about a 400 yard uh, zero, which is where this rifle's notorious for shooting extremely high just because at that 400 yard zero, you know, most people aren't going to be firing at that distance and this right here isn't really capable of touching out at that distance with the gain twist barrel. But if you take your front sight blade and you dip it down to just at the tip of that V-notch, apparently that gives you a 200 yard sight, which is something that I can work with. So I'm going to be using that 200 yard sight and I'm going to be shooting at my target and I want to see just how high this thing shoots. I tried doing some research to see just how high these things actually fired and nobody could give me any one real direct answer. So I guess I'm just gonna come out here and do it myself. I have a grand total of four rounds to figure this out and I have no stripper clips or no in block clips with me. So this right here is a single shot rifle right now. So I have our target freshly spray painted and I have four rounds of 6.5 Carcano, Carcano, and we're going to go ahead and lob them downrange. <laughs> I was never a fan of the Monlicker, Manlicker uh, style clips, just because if you don't have one, you literally cannot load your rifle except for one round at a time, which is exactly what we have to do here. All right, so we have a round in the chamber. Safety is off, finger is off the trigger. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna aim at like the bottom of that target and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna take my sweet time with this, make sure that I'm hitting right where I wanna hit. All right, I'm lining up at that 200 yard mark. All right, all right, I see my hit on target. I pulled that just a hair right, I was aiming at the bottom, looks like we fired about a foot high. So here at about 40 yards, maybe 50, you fire about a foot high, maybe, maybe 15 inches. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna grab that brass because I wanna reload that. <laughs> Primer's fine, no rupturing, excellent. I'm going to load another round and I'm actually gonna lean up against the tree that this GoPro is on and I'm going to send around like that, see, just to make sure that I'm hitting right where I wanna be hitting. 
So you guys will not be able to see me shooting this round, but trust me, I am going to fire a round. Here we go. Okay, it looks like I hit relatively around the same spot. Let me go check that. Is this adjustable left or right? No, I'd have to adjust the front post, which I can do. Unless that right there is an adjustment. This might be windage adjustable. I don't know about that. I will have to check on that, but this screw right here might be a windage adjusting screw. All right, two confirmed rounds. They stacked pretty much right on top of each other. Hello there, Silkworm. How are you doing today? They stacked pretty much right on top of each other. I was aiming at the bottom, and I hit about a foot high at this distance. So uh, I also seem to have pulled right on both times. This time, whenever I fire this round, I'm going to go ahead and just really gingerly squeeze that trigger. Make sure I'm not pulling one way or the other. Really get those fundamentals in. And just like last time, I'm gonna lean up against the tree. So here we go. All right, I'm leaning against the tree and I'm about to fire. I'm aiming for the bottom of the target again. Really gonna squeeze that trigger. Okay, that time I really took my time with it. And I really made sure that I was right on target. And it looks like we once again hit the same spot. Let me go double check that. All right, that round was a wee bit lower than the other one, but I was also kind of holding a little bit lower as well, but we still are hitting just a hair right. One more round. Let's send it just to confirm that that is exactly where I'm hitting. I'm trying to get that little notch, the, the little, the little, uh, the very tip of the front sight like all the way down on the bottom. I want to get this as close to zero as possible. So with where I was aiming on that one, I was aiming that notch just a little bit lower. I'll put up a diagram on where it is I was actually aiming it, but I definitely was more center, but I'm still hitting just a hair right. So I will have to adjust the sights on this thing. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just do a free hand round because, you know, just hearing the gunfire is probably not as fun as watching me actually shoot the rifle. So just like before, I'm going to take my sweet time in firing this. I normally like cut out the time that it takes for me to actually line this up and I just video skip to whenever I actually fire the rifle. A lot of people don't catch up on that. And they're like, you said you were going to take your sweet time and then you just immediately pulled the trigger. I cut it out. <laughs> so you're not going to notice that. Well, as it fire, let's get out of here. All right. Looking at it, I'd say probably about a foot high from the 50 yard mark. So if you decide to use these for hunting, you're gonna fire about a foot high at the 50 yard mark. I'm officially out of Carcano ammo, which makes me kind of sad because this is actually a really nice rifle to shoot. And after those four rounds, I feel quite competent in my point of aim with this rifle. I will absolutely have to order some more ammunition. I do have Carcano clips as well, I just didn't bring them out here because uh, I do not have access to where they currently are. So, no Carcano clips for me today. So here are where I actually fired. You can see how I was pulling a little bit right. That last round really was a lot more center than, it, than its counterparts were. So that tells me that a lot of that is just me pulling the gun just a hair right. I gotta work on my trigger discipline but a little bit of side adjustment still would probably not hurt because I am hitting consistently right. The last round was quite a deal more center. Uh, the third round that I fired was a little bit lower, but that's because I was aiming the sights down just a hair lower. Uh, so with where I'm at, that 200 yard mark looks like I fire about a foot high at about 50 yards. I imagine as you go out further, that's gonna drop. So depending on your point of aim, I'd expect to fire between a foot and six inches high, depending on whether or not you're going to the 50 yard mark or the 100 yard mark. What I'm likely gonna do, I'm not sure if the rear sights are windage adjustable. I don't know what that screw is that's on it. I don't think that they are because it looks pretty much fastened, but the uh, front sight should be windage adjusted. So I'm probably just gonna very lightly adjust that uh, in order to make up for this right here. All right, well, that was actually a lot of fun. And uh, I don't get to bring my Carcano rifles out here as often as I would like to, 
just because the ammunition is quite expensive and difficult to find, but I do have a sporterized 1891 and I would very much like to take it hunting just because it's a delightfully light rifle. And uh, now that I know that the point of aim, because the one I have is pretty much exactly this, so the point of aim is gonna be pretty much the same, although I still am gonna make sure that the elevation and windage is okay, but now I know relatively on where to hold it to make that happen. The reason I decided to use this and not the hunting rifle, A, this way is military configuration. Uh, a lot more people are going to have one of these versus a sporterized one, especially since these were surplused into the country not too terribly long ago. Not only that, but my sporterized one is not functional right now. I, I, I'm doing some work to it. So uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some actual ammunition, some soft point stuff that I'll actually be using out in the field and I'm going to use that to really see where that particular rifle is hitting. This one right here appears to be hitting just a hair right. I would feel comfortable using this one for hunting, but I don't want to scratch up or scar up the stock because it is actually in pretty nice condition, all things considered. Looks like I'm getting a lot of my sweat on it though. <laughs> but there's no reason for me not to use my sporterized one, and this sporterized one is just so nice it is a very very nice sporterization nice and lightweight and that 6.5 very light recoil it's it's going to be perfect for the purposes that i'm using it for but i want to see if that one hits right or left or how the elevation is on that one but the elevation should be relatively the same as this rifle right here i just want to see if windage is going to be okay on that one so Whenever I get that one up to par, I'll probably make another video on it just for fun. I mean, that's why I do these videos because they're fun to make. So this right here is my troop special model and it actually hit relatively, you know, a half decent group considering how inaccurate people say these rifles are and how inaccurate I actually am. If I had like a point of aim to actually aim at because I was just aiming around the bottom of the target, then I feel like it would have had a better group, but that's all my ammo, so. That's all that I can do with this thing. Okay, well, thanks for watching, folks. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel because I do this kind of stuff pretty much all the time. Uh, if you like the video, do me a favor and like the video. That helps out with the algorithm. Uh, description down below, you're going to find a bunch of link to, links to all sorts of stuff. I'm going to go and grab my 6.5 PPU brass right here. And uh, I don't have what I need to reload it right now, but I will. And then I'll be able to come out and fire this some more. So let's see, I got spray paint, camera, there's my earmuffs, got my rifle. I wanna shoot something else though. I'm gonna go figure out another video to make. You guys go off, have a fantastic day, and thanks for watching. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.